back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about everything board game related. I am Jeremy Salinas, and I am here with my host, David Waybright. Hello, everyone. We are back from Gen Con 2016 with another brand new release by Breaking Games, and we're talking about Moonquake Escape today. Moonquake Escape. Escape. So yeah, we always got that from Jeff when we were playing the game. So this is a cool little game, right? Oh yeah, it's good. The presentation in this game is spectacular. Yeah, it's got a bit of a, when you first look at it, it kind of has a little bit of that mousetrap throwback vibe to it. Especially this little thing right here. But there's that here. So much fun. This is so reminiscent of mousetrap. Right. Um, But the game has actually got a lot more depth than I thought it did. Yeah. Uh, I I was really pleasantly surprised. I think it's, uh, uh, it appears like a family game, but I think adults, if they gave it a chance, will have some fun with it too. Yeah, so it is a two to six player bluffing game and there's not really much more to say about it, yeah, than it other than it's just kind of a bluffing mostly race bluffing. game to the end. I so, mean there's a lot of things you do but yeah. it really comes down to the bluffing. It's built around that. Right. So the whole uh, game component in here is racing to the center and, and trying to get to the launch pad. So each yeah, player yeah. represents a specific prisoner that has uh, been sentenced off to a moon. Yeah, criminal alien. Right. And then the moon's uh, gravitational uh, or the planet's gravitational moon creates a moonquake, right? right? So the board is constantly shifting back and forth, so you're trying to navigate the terrain and the other prisoners trying to kill you. The first person gets a launch pad, takes off, wins. Exactly. Right. The cool thing, all that navigation and when people are trying to kill you or the guards are trying to kill you, it's not in the traditional sense of things taking place on the board. It all takes place in your tableau where they're really just trying to find you. It kind of comes down to a bit of a three-card Monty sort of uh, right. bluffing game right. in front of each player, which is kind of cool. So let's walk you guys through how the game actually works. So it's going to take place in four different phases. Yeah, the four main phases. I mean, the first thing you do at the beginning of every phase, like Jeremy's done a couple times now, yeah. is you can't spin this it. cool moon. Yeah, you can't help <laughs> but spin this little moon. And on it, you'll see it's basically the die, and it tells everyone how many actions they get that round. Or charges, battery yeah, charges. Yeah, battery charges. Which is represented on your little action board here by a number that is uh, zero through five, as you see. Right. Yep. And throughout the game, you might store some of those. Yes. So you might end up having more than you did if you if you held on to some from the last round. Right. So you do that, you get your uh, battery charges to spend on actions, and that's the beginning of the moonquake phase moon and this is <laughs> moonquake so die. the moonquake is where this dive comes in you roll this and this is basically going to sort of unsettle the the planet so these will all spin you're going to roll a die for each one of these different layers which could spin the players that are on them into different directions exactly so it has a bit of that well it's, while it's not a programming game yeah this feels a little bit like that where best play best laid plans go to waste yeah you know, you rotate, like, for instance, this one rotates the outer ring two spaces counterclockwise. Yeah, and then you might roll it again, and the other one might spin the other way. Sometimes they don't spin at all. You know, and, there's and, a zero. And the way the board spins, you're looking at these, and it's kind of hard to tell, I'm sure, on camera, but there's these pipes, and you're going to have to line these pipes up to the next location right. where a pipe makes sense uh, during the connection area. But this so. really affects you based on uh, your movement up towards the launch pad. Right. Because the next phase is the escape. Right. So in that phase, everyone moves one space up toward the launch pad right. and depending on the movement in the first phase you might be moving into different types of areas that have different effects so always what will happen on your turn you always have two options to move it's either left or the right of the pipe right. that you currently sit on so this player here which is um, the purple player can decide to move to the planes or to the crater in a future turn once he's in the crater he can decide to move to the radiation or the ion storm depending on whether or not the, the whole planet right. shifted again so and some of these terrain types have effects I think, is it in the base game or all just in the advanced game? Uh, well, what we're showing here, guys, is the advanced yeah. game. The base game, when you flip all these over, they're just typically planes, yep. areas, and craters. Um, the advanced game adds some of these different uh, terrains, which have bonus or good or bad effects on the backside, which right. tell you what to do. But also, every single area that you move to, and both advanced and the basic, has a initial ability that you get from going there. And that's by these little white dots that you see on there. For instance, if I were to move to this planes area it's got a scan symbol which we'll get into the actions in a little bit but scan yeah. lets you draw a card yeah. so each of these gives you an initial one time ability yeah, an immediate action there. that you can take normally during the action phase right the the other main piece uh, of terrain the planes and the craters mm-hmm. the planes you're kind of out in the open so when it comes time for people to be shooting at you you're a little bit more of a sitting duck right if you go into a crater 
you're safe, but you also can't, can't shoot, shoot anyone. It. Right. Um, so you can play it safe. It's there's a little risk, you know, in mitigating your uh, risk there when it comes time for the action phase. Now, when we're talking about the escape phase, as you said, everyone moves forward one space. The whole idea of the game is that you're bluffing on where your alien prisoner is located, and that is represented by a series of cards that are face down. The only reason you wouldn't move forward is if your alien has been exposed in a previous round. Right. Right? And that prevents you from moving forward. So basically you're going to be behind a turn unless you uncover someone else's. And we'll get on how to uncover people in yeah. just one second. So Yeah, and that brings us to the third phase, which is the action phase. This right. is where you spend your battery charges on the various actions. Right. Jeremy, so, what are the actions? Yeah, so the actions, if you look at the card here, there's five basic actions you'll use in the game. The first one is zap. And that simply means if you are on the same ring as another player, uh, you get to shoot them. Uh, as long as they're not in a crater or you're not in a crater. Uh, when you shoot somebody, you just point to a card that they have, and then they have to reveal that card. Right. Now, there are energy shields, which you can place on top of cards, which will be shot first. And that's kind of the bluffing aspect of the game. Exactly. Do I put it on something that has no relevance behind it? Do I have something that maybe it, like a green card that shoots back at them? So you're bluffing on where your alien may be. So say, for instance, uh, David decided to shoot me, and he picked, just for instance, my alien, since I already knew he was there. Uh, the the ability of shooting someone's alien is that player gets to not only draw a card which can be added to their tableau of face down cards, but also prevents me, as we said, from moving in, in the right. next round. So I mean, you basically just don't want your alien to be revealed. Yeah. So depending on who you're playing with, it's that sort of like, uh, am I going to put him out in the open mm -hmm. uh, do, does my opponent think that I would protect him or not protect him and it's that sort of like reverse psychology upon reverse psychology of trying yeah. to figure out what your opponent's doing so like we said there's green cards which will shoot back at the player and there's even yellow cards these are cards you're actually trying to protect in your tableau because if it's discovered it actually hurts the player that has the card right <laughs> giving you another reason to pr put protection on something other than your alien right so there's a lot of choices going on yeah. when you're putting your cards down and not just really the order, but really when it comes to putting the energy shields and other cards down. Exactly. So the second action is zipping, and that's simply if you're on a ring, you can move two spaces around the ring right. in any way that you go. Uh, scanning is spending three energy to draw a new card. Anytime you draw a card in the game, you pick up all of the cards that you have, and you can reset them down. And so if people's looked at have looked at it before or know where something may be, you can reallocate your... And that's really the biggest powerful element of that. Right move right because the three actions is not cheap in this game no three or three battery charges so the drawing the cards good mm -hmm. but it's the picking all your cards up that's better because and uh, jeremy hasn't gotten to the spy thing yet well go ahead and tell about spy how that works spy allows you to point at a card now this one has to be one that's not protected by a shield right. by a shield but you can point to any card and you get it and you can take a look at it privately mm -hmm. so no one else gets to look at it but say if jeremy looks at my alien mm -hmm. and i know that jeremy Jeremy knows where my alien is, I'm going to want to consider doing that scan ability so that I can pick up and sort of resort my cards or not resort my cards. Right. And the last action you can do is steal. Now, stealing can only take place when you are on the same location as another player. Uh, if you'll notice on this board, there's two spots. There is a ready card and a not ready. Uh, you can spend energy as well to take items that have an energy or a battery charge on the bottom and put them over. Stealing allows you to steal an item that has not been readied. Right. So you can steal energy shields that may be in the not ready or in this case gravitational boots yeah. which allow you to move into certain locations. I haven't them. seen the steal uh, ability used too often in our plays right. but uh, I'll be into with more plays I'll be interested to see how much that comes out. Now there's a couple other different uh, actions you can take uh, as you get closer to the launch pad there's a tractor beam and a defense gun when you land on those locations you can use the ability of those locations and uh, it's simply located on the back of the card, yeah. too. It tells you how you can use that specific location. So those are the basic actions that you take in the game. It'll go around the board. Everyone will use their actions, and then we'll go on to the guard phase. The guard phase, if the guard is not on a ring with everybody, he's going to move forward to a ring where there's people located. And then he's simply going to shoot everybody on that location. The right. player to the right is going to point out a card, and is going to get rid of that card. He's basically the automated defense system for the, the prison. Right. 
And this is going to keep going round and round and round until someone makes it up to the launch pad. Uh, to or more people. Or you know, more it people. Can be, it, a lot of people can be in the, uh, the uh, rocket ship. The, the <laughs> trick there is you have to have at least one action point at the end of the round. One energy left. To, be on, to get on the rocket. And not have your alien revealed. Right. So if someone shoots you on the launch pad, they can't launch because they know that their alien's up there. Yeah, it's really fun because we've had games where there's a few people on the launch pad, and then it really, you have to just start shooting each other right, because right. you don't want other people to be uh, on the rocket ship. So you reveal as many people as you can. You're not really doing anything else at that point, and hopefully you're the only one that gets on the rocket ship and gets right. off. So that's the basic game. Now, there are some advanced rules that can be added in. Uh, we've already mentioned the rings that can be yeah. turned over some for some of the advanced terrain types. Um, there's also the ability, in the typical game, anytime you draw a blue card, it goes to the right side of your board, um, which allows you to equip it later. But in the advanced game, you can actually use those cards down underneath. Yeah, immediately. This is a bluffing aspect. Now, the only problem is if someone shoots that card, they immediately get that item, and it becomes readied in their area. But I really prefer that mechanic a lot. Because yeah, because it adds in, more to your in, bluffing in, aspects. Enhancing the bluffing table, if you will, is... Uh, almost always uh for me a better better choice i like having uh, that wider variety down there yeah so this game was number five or six on my top 10 yep. uh lists i'll get into my thoughts but let me let me hear yours first what do you think well, i think it's a fun game like i said at the beginning i think a lot of hardcore gamers might have a little trouble at first looking at this and going I mean, it kind of looks like a kid's game. It does. Yeah. Um, it's definitely family friendly. What I think, though, is I, I will say this. If you have a family uh, of board gamers, you should get this game for sure. Yeah. Kids will love this. It has a lot of those buttons to push for kids. You know, doing this, moving guys on the board. Yeah, we didn't even show this. The whole thing moves around. So depending on the player, it right. just goes to their side, which is cool. It's, it's really cool. It's just a fun presentation. But the bluffing mechanic, too, is something that I don't think a lot of little kids get the opportunity to do in a lot of their games. And it's a solid aspect, too, of the It's game. a hugely solid aspect. This is one of the better bluffing games. This game scratches the same image for me. It's a different game, but it scratches is the same ish as uh, Sheriff of Nottingham right. in that bluffing aspect, but I think it's a lot more fun for the family, uh, a lot more easier to play, too. Yeah. I mean, it seems maybe a little bit more complicated when you look at it, but it's really kind of a three-card money thing. Yeah, and there's a lot of cards in the game. I know we didn't show them all to you here, but if when you watch the video, you'll be able to see some of the superimposed cards that we show up here. Uh, a lot of different pieces of equipment, a lot of different terrain uh, aspects, yeah. uh, uh, yellow cards and, and defense cards. You would um, need to be able to read it, I guess, from the family standpoint. Yeah. Um, what does it say? Pretty, 10 and up. That, 10 that and seems up. pretty appropriate. Yeah, I, I, you could probably even go a little younger than that, but yeah. 10 are up for sure. So, Turn for sure. I like it. I, I think it hit all the right things for me. Um, I would still keep it on my list. Um, long term, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this is a game that I'm going to keep coming back to at two years, three years from now. So only time will tell. But right now, I think it's fun. I think it's highly enjoyable. It's got a lot of aspects for heavier gamers as well as entry level gamers. Yeah, I think for a, a, a table of heavier gamers, this is going to be kind of a slightly longer filler style game. No yeah. one's going to sit down and say, let's play Moonquake tonight you know for our game <laughs> right, right so um and it doesn't as, as crazy as it sounds it doesn't take a long time to set up either this board puts together very nicely yeah. and unlike mousetrap yeah. it stays together very well yeah just to show you guys it all just kind of pops right off really nice components yeah. too these rings that you're putting them down on have kind of a nice vinyl oh, finish yeah. to them so very this cool. is really solid solid craftsmanship so we, I, I recommend it for sure. Yeah. So, great game. Uh, thanks to Jeff for showing this game to us and allowing us to uh, review it. And, guys, keep watching. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. And we'll keep bringing out more Gen Con we'll, 2016 we'll more. games to you guys yep. soon. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.